another Whiteboard Wednesday. Matt Hunkler, Jake Robinson from the Blue Lock team. Uh, and today we want to talk a little bit about the dark side of cloud computing. If you step back, yep. Jake, they can see the, the full title here. Um, we we want to talk a little bit about, uh, I guess, some of the downsides of, of cloud computing. Uh, maybe some of the malicious, mm -hmm. uh, darker intents of, okay. of how you can leverage the cloud. But before we do that, I uh, just want to mention we had some great uh, engagement on our last post on the EC2 versus the vCloud kind of comparison that we did. Uh, getting great responses there, keep them coming. Uh, we plan to maybe do a video post uh, later on and we can uh, maybe address some of those comments in a, in a video post. Mm -hmm. But um, looking at this dark side of cloud computing this week, uh, we want to talk uh, a little bit about you know maybe some of the, the darker intents and some uh, maybe ways to alleviate those. And then okay. kind of maybe within the darker intents, you know, you kind of described to me just before uh, we did this, we, we did a little prep. Uh, you talked that you know there are kind of two buckets. Uh, you talk about uh, kind of the vulnerabilities of the cloud and people uh, hacking into that, and then also the other bucket being using cloud computing for malicious intent, mm -hmm. leveraging that technology to either hack a machine or spam somebody, uh, other malicious activities. So if if you want to just walk through that really quickly, and I can. I can whiteboard some things out and then sure. we'll leave it open to questions. So we've seen, like Matt said, two different kind of kind of buckets. The first one is, uh, you know, I'm running in the cloud and I, I've left a vulnerability on one of my machines and that vulnerability is exploited and then somebody uses my machines for malicious intent or, you know, attacks me directly. So that's, that's kind of the first bucket. Okay. The second bucket is actually leveraging the cloud to spam, to hack, uh, whatever, whatever you want to do, basically. So a lot of we're, we're we're seeing a lot more of that in recent times, just because the self-service on-demand creation of virtual machines is easy to do. I can code it. It can be automatic. I can run it. Uh, I can run an exploit in about five minutes or whatever it takes for that particular exploit, and that's it. I spin it back down, and it's done. So and it's almost. Is, does that add a layer of kind of anonymity then to to the hack? Sure. I can get a stolen credit card and uh, you know a stolen phone number. And I can be completely anonymous when I spin up my self-service account. So there's no human, there's no checks and balances there to kind of to kind of stop that. Right. Okay. So going back to the vulnerability in the cloud, I mean, what kinds of things can can people do there to to protect themselves from their cloud getting hacked? I mean, I know there's IPS, IDS. Right. Um, yeah. So so IPS, IDS out in front. Uh, you know, even a firewall will help out in front. You never want to leave your machines just kind of naked on the internet unless they're completely locked down. Sure. And, and when we say IPS, IDS, what do we mean? Uh, so intrusion prevention and uh, intrusion detection. Okay. And that, those can be either a physical or a virtual device? Is that right? Right. Okay. So when we're talking about cloud, typically we want virtual devices because because of their portability. And, right. Um, but, you know, vulnerability in the cloud, patching. So patch your machines, keep stuff, keep stuff up to date. Uh, we, use, we use Shavlik for our patching. Okay. Uh, so leveraging the cloud yeah. for, for hacking, yeah. um, that's, a, that's kind of a different thing. So that's completely outbound. Somebody is initiating these attacks right. from their own boxes. Um, which in that case would be an acceptable use policy stopping them. Okay. <laughs> so an acceptable use policy or AUP is just an administrative control basically. It, it's with the provider it says you're not allowed to do this particular activity. Right. In which we've seen people do it anyway. Anyway, so uh, you know, people sending uh, spam email sure. out, so you spin up a bunch of SM SMTP boxes and you know just shoot out mail to a bunch of addresses in your library, and which causes issues not only for 
uh, the provider, but also other clients on that provider. So we've seen entire blocks out on the internet be, you know, spam blocked just because of this rampant use of the technology to send spam. So that can be a problem for cloud providers that have multiple clients in a certain block of IPs, mm -hmm. right? Right. Okay. So typically the, the spam house type people will block just a slash 24, which is, you know, 254 addresses. Right. So that's, you know, it's, it's one thing when one client is affected, but when multiple clients are affected in the cloud, you know, that's a, that's a big deal for cloud computing. Yeah. Um, so in the future, what do I see? Uh, you know, probably stricter monitoring on the traffic going out of, of the cloud providers. So cloud providers I see will, will actually be maybe putting, not necessarily an IPS that will prevent you from going outbound, but maybe an IDS just to, just to keep an eye out for spam type stuff like that. Detect these things, preemptive. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, you know, I, I think we did a pretty good brief overview. Uh, we can leave it open to questions there. And, um, you know, I think another thing that's interesting is to go online and just look up some of these use cases uh, for yourself. You can see examples of how cloud computing, you know, is, is related to hacking stories, mm -hmm. malware uh, stories. It, it's also important, too, to, to kind of look at it through the lens that uh, cloud computing is a big uh, search, you know, search term, hype term, and people will just append that into uh, a story right. to get more coverage. So. Uh, you know, also think about how cloud con cloud technology uh, is different from the traditional world, uh, and, and maybe you know some of these things aren't necessarily tied to cloud computing at all, other than the fact that you know there was cloud involved in the infrastructure or in this you know, software as a service platform or platform as a service, mm -hmm. which these days is pretty much almost any IT environment. It's true. So. Um, Think about that when you're looking through those stories. Uh, hit us up in the comments. Jake, thanks so much uh, for walking us through this stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time.